My name is uh, John K for Kenny, K-E-N-N-Y Barrett. And uh, my, I'm 80 years old at the present time. And my background is I am first generation American. My father and mother came from Ireland mm. many, many years ago. And uh, I end up, uh, I, I was born in New York City and I grew up in Dobbs Ferry, New York. And uh, I went, of course, went to Champlain College for a while, and then I dropped out and I went to, into the military. Uh, I got out of the military and I went to Niagara University. And uh, then I went to work in New York City for a while. Then I had an opportunity to um, uh, take over a, a job upstate New York at, in, uh, based in Albany and uh, then in, when I was in Albany for maybe five years then I was transferred here to Syracuse and that's how I got to Syracuse. Mm -hmm. I got here with the United States Brewers Association. Mm -hmm. So um, you were actually wore this past to Korea in the very beginning at, right after the infantry and training programs but later you went to Korea or how long did you stay there? No, I never, did, never, did, I never did get to Korea although I was I was actually anxious to go there, mm -hmm. and uh, it ended up that I, I ended up, my mother insisted that I take typing in high school because her son Kenny was going to go to college. Mm -hmm. And it ends up that uh, even though I had all this great infantry training, I ended up being a clerk typist. Mm -hmm. for, for but later you join and become the, the soldiers in the Airborne, U.S. Airborne, yeah. right? Yep. Unit and and you never participated in the war. No, I did no. not. But you are officially designated as a Korean War veteran. Yes, I am. Yes. Yes. Um, the better. Could you explain about why you became uh, designated as a Korean War veteran, even though you never been to Korea? I was uh, in the military during that uh, the war period, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the. Um, I'm not sure what the date was, the cutoff date, but I was in the military uh, during that uh, conflict period before the armistice. Mm -hmm. And um, there were, I come from Dobbs Ferry, New York, and there were two young friends of mine that lost their lives in um, Korea. Jimmy McCoy mm -hmm. and uh, a fellow by the name of Harry Storms. And, um, they, they uh, I'm not sure what, probably Harry Storms uh, got killed on, uh, shortly before the armistice. And then Jimmy McCoy got killed very soon after he got to Korea. Who are those two? These are neighbor, these are friends of mine from Dobbs Ferry, New York. Okay. Okay. They're young, young, they were young people mm -hmm. that I knew of. And of course it was just, uh, uh, of course, even even if I did get over there, it would have been probably after the armistice. Mm -hmm. But it's still there were still problems, you know, a lot of problems taking place over there at the time. There should be a reason why you were designated as Korean War veterans because I know from the document from the Veterans Office that they actually extended the period. Uh, of Korean War veterans from 1953 to the January of 1955 for the for for make the benefits available for the uh, the soldiers. But I don't think that every American soldier were designated as a Korean War veteran because they served during the war period. So we we have to find it out why you were uh, designated as a Korean War because originally you were this. Uh, supposed to be dispatched to the Korea, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was pipeline for Korea when I, when I finished up basic training, mm -hmm. and I, I guarantee you they, they probably were going through those 201 files, and they found out that I could type, mm -hmm. and the military needed people that could do mm -hmm. read write. <laughs> so you told you told me that uh, you. So many um, soldiers actually returning from Korea during the war, and then they were uh, dispatched again to the Korea. So, any stories that you hear from them, you heard from them about Korean War or anything that you oh yeah are reminiscent of? 
Matter of fact, I heard some great, uh, great stories about uh, uh, the various uh, countries that participated on that 34th parallel. As a matter of fact, the, uh, I'll never forget a story that I heard that this uh, American unit on one side was a Turkish outfit and another side was a Scottish outfit. <laughs> okay. And the, uh, the, the Scottish guys would, were, would play their bagpipes and it scared the blazes out of the, uh, the people from the, the, the North Koreans. Uh -huh. And apparently those Turks, the North Koreans were scared stiff of them. So the, the, this, uh, this fellow I was talking with said, well, we were sitting really in good position because the Scots were over here and the Turks were over here and, we, and they shared, they, I got, apparently they shared a lot of things together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but they, uh, during the, uh, apparently they had, when they had the arm, once they had the armistice, there was a lot of time to spend, spend with one another. So how did you came to know about this project, having an interview and trying to have a digital clearinghouse of the, all the artifacts? Artifacts belongs to Korean war veterans. Yeah. Well, what ends up happening, they, they called me from the uh, 105 chapter mm -hmm. and asked me if I wanted to help them out with this uh, program that you people are putting together. I said, heck yes, why not? I'll help. I so why do you, I mean, could you share your thoughts about the importance of this project having a permanent clearing house of everything that talking about the Korean War veterans and why is it important for the future generations? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We don't want to forget that, that you know, a lot of people tried to, to uh, uh, sweep the uh, Korean War uh, under, the, under the rug. No way. We lost a lot of people there, and it. it uh, uh, and what's nice about it is the uh, the South Koreans are phenomenal uh, friends of ours. Have you been to Korea? No, I have not. No, no I have not. Do you, are you following up with the uh, the recent development, economic development, and oh yeah, oh I follow it pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about the legacy of Korean war veterans on this prospering Korea? What do I think about that? Yeah, what is the legacy of Korean war veterans? Well, I'll tell you one thing about the uh, Korean people, the South Korean people, is that they, uh, they love us and it's, it's amazing what they have uh, uh, not only contributed to uh, the veterans groups, but they invite them back, invite the, the, the GIs back and uh, they host them to, uh, I thought that was pretty nice, mm -hmm. very nice matter of fact. Could you talk about the GI Bill that you received and how it actually helped you after you retired from the uh, military? Oh, absolutely. The, the GI Bill was the greatest thing that ever happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would have probably still gone to college someplace, but I would never have had the opportunity to, to go away again to college. I would probably have to live at home and day hop someplace. But I ended up going to Niagara University, which is up in Niagara Falls. And uh, I spent four years up there, and I came home with a, a degree, and uh, uh, the GI Bill was very good for me. What does GI Bill provide you? At that time, we had, uh, uh, I think we got about, if I'm not mistaken, it was like $600 a month. Does that, uh, did that pay tuition, or I, do they, Paid you at yeah they would university or they would the, no, how did it work? they would send a check to us uh, on a monthly basis I'm pretty sure and we would in turn just uh, walk the check over to the uh, uh, comptroller's office over to the admissions office and turn it in so all I had to do was supply my uh, um, you know I could work summers and uh, I, even toward the end there, I worked evenings and whatnot, weekends, uh, waiting on tables, but uh, I was able to earn my own keep, room and board type situation, but the uh, tuition 
was taken care of basically by the GI Bill. That's that's pretty much what it, how it worked out back in those days. How much was the tuition? Can you remember at, at uh, the time at Niagara? Well, I, t I think at that time, I think the tuition was uh, maybe twelve hundred a year, hmm. something like that. Hmm. And we so we got so much a, a month, and uh, whatever that was, we would set, give to the uh, school, and that covered the uh, tuition. Well, it's, I, I feel it's very important to belong to uh, associations and groups that are uh, r relative to the uh, military and whatnot. And I ended up being a, uh, I'm in the Korean War veterans, I'm in the American Legion, I'm in the, 10, uh, the 11th Airborne Division Association, and, uh, and of course I contribute to quite a few of the, mili of the uh, military groups that uh, they sponsor, you know, looking for money and whatnot. But it ends up, I feel it's very important to uh, to be part of the Korean War Veterans Association because I was basically, uh, my life was interrupted for a while when I was drafted, but I was a little different than a draftee. I was a requested draft because I dropped out of college. This is in 1953. I dropped out of college early in 1953 and uh, I had to report to the draft board. That's when the draft was going. And the only w way at that time that you stayed out of the military or out of the draft was if you stayed in college, went to law school, went to medical school, got married, went into the priesthood, things like that. That's what kept you out of the service. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I was very interested in, in going into the military. I thought it would have been very nice to do. And I ended up requesting draft and I was, uh, went to, uh, from, I grew up in Dobbs Ferry, New York, by the way, down uh, close to New York City. And uh, what ends up happening, I uh, left college at that time, I was at Champlain College up, up in Plattsburgh, and I left college and uh, they advised me to check with my draft board as soon as I got home. So I went to the draft board and immediately when I went down to the draft board, I wrote a letter requesting draft. And within a week or 10 days, I was in the military, <laughs> okay? And I went to Fort Kilmer and then Fort Dix, and then they sent me to Fort Campbell, Kentucky for basic training. Basic training, how long was it? My basic training was 16 weeks. I had eight weeks of light infantry and eight weeks of heavy uh, infantry weapons. And all through that period of time, all I heard was, you're going to Korea. You better be prepared. You are going to Korea, and you you didn't nap or sleep when you were in one of those classes on weaponry, on what was going on in, in Korea and everything else. And uh, it was a very, very uh, a stringent uh, training program. I mean, you, we re they really had to push those people. And uh, because a lot of people didn't want to go in, of course. But I, I don't know, I joined up. I. I uh, requested draft, so I was going to make the best of it. And uh, it ends up, I finished up my 16 weeks of infantry training, and I had 30 days leave because I was had to go back to the replacement company at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and uh, I was going to be shipped to Korea. I was pipelined to Korea. Went home for my 30 days, and everybody was saying prayers for me and uh, uh, wishing me good luck and uh, Party. We had parties and everything else. I'm going to Korea the whole bit. I went back to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and I, all of my buddies were there that I went through basic with, and we all went back and everybody was going to Korea. Well, I sat around the replacement company. Everybody else was leaving. I sat around the replacement company for about probably two months, maybe even longer, and I was waiting for my orders to come through to go to Korea. These other people were leaving and they were going to Korea. Well, what happens to me? Well, I get my orders and what was it? Division Headquarters Company, uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, mm. as a clerk typist. Mm. And that's what happened to me. So I went, up to, uh, uh, I went up to Division Headquarters Company and I worked in the, uh, in the typing pool, which was very boring. 
probably 50, 50 people working in a room typing orders for people going to Korea, going to Japan, going to Europe, you name it. And uh, so then what happens was I had an opportunity to uh, go to Fort uh, Benning for jump school. So I went to a jump school at Fort Benning the fall of uh, 53 and uh, came back from, uh, from uh, jump school at Benning and uh, probably three or four months later, I had an opportunity as a corporal to go to jump master school. So I also went to jump master school. And while I was, while I was uh, at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, a lot of the troops were rotating back from Korea and Japan. And one of the groups that was, was uh, very active in uh, Korea was the 187th Airborne mm -hmm. Unit. And they were, a lot of those fellows that came back from Korea were coming through our unit there for retirement or reassignment, or even some of them went right back. They came in and they stayed in, uh, in, United, in the United States for maybe six or eight months, and then they uh, requested assignment back to the uh, to Korea or to uh, Japan or wherever it was. And so that's basically how I ended up being involved. And then when I got out of the service, I um, it was very fortunate for me, I had the GI Bill because of the Korean War. And uh, I got through college and uh, then I uh, uh, continued my life and I got, you know, got married and uh, Three children, beautiful children, and uh, so that's basically my connection to uh, Korea, and of course the the Korean um, uh, Korea is a great great neighbor and friend of the United States. Well, for one thing, on the on the Korean War, uh, uh, we made some great friends over there in that part of the world, and uh, uh, the. Uh, Matter of fact, I don't even realize how we, I don't even really understand how we actually initially got in there, but it, uh, apparently there were American interests in there in South Korea before we got in there, right? Mm -hmm. Going to war? Mm -hmm. Must have been, right? But uh, uh, I hope that um, our friendship can last as long as I live and, and my family because it's been a great, great friendship. And uh, it just goes to show you what, what can happen when, when two uh, uh, groups get together and, and uh, work together and look what they've got. You've got a great country over there and uh, we've of course got a great country here but uh, it's uh, very nice. And uh, the, uh, well it's, I, I enjoy doing what I'm doing now, you know, giving back a little bit if I can, you know, it's worth it. Any stories that you want to share with us of um, anything related to Korea? Yeah, I can remember oh. some, some of the fellows that got back from Korea when I mm -hmm. first uh, went up to Division Headquarters Company, which was right after the armistice. Uh, they fought pretty hard, some of those guys. I'll tell you, mm -hmm. <laughs> some, of the, some of the people that were there when I was, that were training me, were veterans that had returned from Korea, and uh, that was no picnic. But uh, we uh, we were able to, you know, together they pulled off a nice, I think, a very good victory. And uh, but it was not it was not a, a cakewalk. It was not a cakewalk. I'll tell you that because the. Um, and then, well, let's, I'll tell you what was, was, was interesting. The, um, I was up at Niagara, and uh, it was probably 57, maybe 58, and uh, I got uh, notified that within 30 days I could be called back for Vietnam. Mm. DNB and Fu, and that was when the uh, French pulled out of uh, in French Indochina. Yep. That was uh, because of the uh, basically, I think the airborne um, MOS they called it 
was very important at that time for some reason. And uh, I was uh, designated to a uh, unit in Staten Island, New York, even though I was up in Niagara Falls, as a reservist. Anything else? Great. Thank you very much for coming. Well, I enjoyed it.